Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, I think there are a couple of uh, questions here. I'll just maybe address that and then um, we can we'll go forward. Uh, so Anita, you had requested for a couple of verses and I have put in around three verses uh, that you could hold on to. Um, this is specifically with regard to ministry. Um, when, where you did mention about uh, you know what you feel about the confidence that you you um, uh, sometimes you feel you don't have, I, I'd like to encourage you to, if you could download the um, you know the APC app on the app, there are uh, there is a there is an entire section called this toolkit, and in that there are declarations that you can make. Um, for different areas of your life. So um, all the verses are there with the declaration and um, and a lot of uh, areas are, are are there. So um, I, I'll, I recommend that, you know, it's something that uh, we use sometimes in our family prayer just to declare what God has said about us in specific areas of our life. So it is available um, on Google Store. Um, and it, it's the APC uh, app, and you will have a couple of sections, and in that there is a toolkit, and in that you will find um, some very helpful uh, uh, resources for your daily walk. Okay, uh, so you could you could probably take that, uh, Anita. Um, and then I think there was a question with Sis, uh, Sissy. Sissy, you said, how do you get the book of inner wholeness? It's there on the stream. It's been uh, uploaded on your classroom. So if you can just go um, to the classroom and uh, you will see a place uh, on the stream, mm, you will have that there as a, it's it's there, right? It's, it's the last post uh, in the stream, the very last post, the very post at the end, uh, not in the beginning, but at the end you will find the inner uh, book so you could just download that from there okay. i just saw it thank you okay okay all right thank Great. you thank you yeah and i think there was a question uh from abni she said uh, how uh, can you identify the gift from somebody could be an occult object now if um so so I, I think one of the things that, that we do identify, especially when it comes from different places, um, you know, uh, like, like, for example, there are certain artifacts or any kind of charms or amulets or even ornaments that come, uh, could have had its dedications uh, to, to other gods. Um, so as a practice, I think maybe there are not all that you can identify, but there are some that are symbols of occult practices, like for example, the yin yang, um, or um, you know, like like these, the laughing Buddha, or uh, um, you know, in uh, uh, especially among the Indian culture, there are there are very many uh, uh, objects that represent a certain uh, cult or a certain false religion. Mm, uh, and yeah, there are many mentions I can make. Um, uh, but you know, to be to to first of all, probably do uh, you know uh, do some kind of a reading on what some of those artifacts and those articles are. Uh, so so that's that's one thing. Yeah, I think. See, I think the, Anita has also put in many things over here, right? Uh, yeah. So some of those are do have, if you actually go back and look back at its tradition or its culture, you will see that it it comes as a uh, as 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 an artifact to please their gods. okay? So one is being aware. Second is now there may be certain things that's given to you that that may look harmless. And I think um, one way of doing that is just to uh, pray over over things like just like how you would dedicate your home you know like if, when in the indian culture i think for for those who who are not from india uh so before the builders make a building they have 
and especially in the Hindu culture, they have their prayers that's um, uh, that's uh, taken over onto the land and the foundation that's made. And even after the building's made, it's uh, it's dedicated to 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 their gods, right? Uh, now that doesn't mean that you and I, which means you and I, you know, especially if you're staying in India and you want to buy a house, you'll probably will never be able to, because uh, a lot of them, you know, dedicate these homes to their own beliefs and their religion but what we do is go and consecrate the home and dedicate the home for the lord jesus christ so remember god has given you the authority to do that and uh, you go in and uh, 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 he'll go in and dedicate it to uh, to us uh, to the lord and uh, remember that when you stay in that premises it is the power and the um the holiness of god that is going to exuberate there so maybe there are times that you may not know or there may be things that you do see have been dedications but then you you ensure that um you, you know you you go there, you pray, you dedicate your space uh, uh, to the Lord. And if you've done that, you know, you're you're well, well safe um, enough. I hope I answered that, Avni. Sure, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, Anita has brought up uh, a lot of this. In fact, there are very many uh, things like this. Um, you know, you will, you will see limes and chilies. In front of an auto, uh, front of the vehicles, or front of a doorpost, and all of that. Yeah, and I think it's all to keep away the evil eye, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So I think we've. Uh, um, so just being careful, and also know, and at, at places that you that you don't know or you can't understand, just go there with the power of the Holy Spirit and pray, and uh, all of them will will have to leave. Okay, um, so going back to um, the, the 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 last point of, of of one of the action points is after yes we've consecrated ourselves now it is to welcome the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives you know as uh, we read that it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks every yoke and breaks every burden and bondage. And it is the presence and the power and the work of the Holy Spirit that completely brings about that wholeness into our lives. Okay, so we 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 um, uh, now this is something that I think is like an everyday um, welcoming, you know. And uh, I've I've begun to make this a personal practice that every morning, as soon as I get up, or every night. Uh, as I'm laying, lying on bed, what I do, um, what I'm consciously doing is to consecrate my thoughts onto the presence of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, I chat, I just kind of talk. Um, and it's not in, you know, holy prayer, but it's just saying, Holy Spirit, you know, you're here right here with me, you're watching me sleep. Uh, you know, you're you're present with me through the night. You know, I'd like to have some good dreams where you're telling me something that I can understand. So, you know, I kind of do do just like a childish chat with him. Okay, and because when the spirit of the Lord is upon us, there are there are multiple uh, opportunities. It's too small a word, but there are multiple things. That uh, that that comes as a result of his anointing, and we see that in Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 7. And uh, uh, would somebody like to read it, please? Isaiah 61 1 to 7. Can someone read that? <clears throat> Isaiah 61 1 to 7. Shall I read now? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. Isaiah 61, 1 to 7. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn, 
to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness and planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities and desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your wine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor and instead of confusion, this they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Amen. Amen. So if you if you just read that passage, you will see what the spirit of the Lord upon um, upon us can do. And, and uh, the, the verses one to um, one to three uh, is prophetic about Jesus, right? The spirit of the Lord is upon him and he's anointed to preach good tidings to the poor. And, you know, you, you, you see that in progression. And that's what the spirit of the Lord can do in you. Bring whole, not just wholeness, but, but throw, throw out so much of his anointing work through you. You become the fragrance of Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's, it reads in 2 Corinthians that you are the fragrance of, of Jesus Christ. God makes you the fragrance of Jesus Christ through you, right? So you become that when, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes. So um, even as we've done this cleaning and this washing out, this, uh, this um, consecration, let's just end it with, um, with, the, with, with, a, with another uh, uh, welcoming of the Holy Spirit to to welcome His His work, not just His presence, but His work in us, so that we so that the name of Jesus can be glorified. So let let me go with you through this prayer, this through this prayer, loving Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, I welcome you. Fill my entire being, my mind, my will my emotions with all of your presence. Release me from all that is binding, that is negative, and that is not of you. Heal me from every hurt, every pain, and every wound. Heal all my memories. Cleanse my thoughts my affections, my feelings, desires, my emotions, and passions. Empower my will to choose what is always pleasing to God my Father. Work through me so that Jesus is glorified in all I say and do and think. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Okay. Now the next four points are something that uh, is, is are, are things that you need to, that we need to actively start doing. So they, they, they are more what we call as lifestyle changes, you know, and things that, that we continue to do, not just as a, as a one-off. And um, to keep ourselves to, to, to experience this uh, place of healing and deliverance. So the first one is to ensure to cut off all ties or to get rid of everything that brings you to sin. And this can be um, in, in many areas. This can be in one is in maybe who you engage with. That is probably certain relationships that you engage with that causes you to sin. It could be um, 
events, maybe places that you go that causes you to sin. It could be things that you habitually do that causes you to sin. Any kind of old patterns or old ways is something that you need to deal with severely. Okay? Because what happens is, um, it's like this, you know, think of you having a white shirt and you washed it pristine clean and white. And um, you would want to keep that white shirt in, you know, maybe on, on a table or on a, on a bed, and you wouldn't want to keep it on the floor. Because the more that it is lying in a dirty place, it is going to rub off, the dirt is going to rub off on your white shirt. And the more it stays there, it's just going to be stamped on, and again, come to a place of defiling. Again, an open door is there. Okay, so getting a rid of anything that causes you to sin. Now, um, so if it is like, for example, if it is these constant thoughts of inadequacy and, um, you know, of, of who you are, you know, those constant thoughts that you've, you just renounced and you just got off, going back to a place where, um, Maybe it it is through some some kind of uh, uh, maybe some kind of social media. You're probably engaged in some form of a social media that that could could enhance this. Or <clears throat> let's say someone who's addicted uh, had had an addiction, okay, of either pornography or um, or illicit relationships. You open again yourself to to harm when you engage in those activities again. Maybe it's watching movies that can erupt that, or it is just browsing the internet over when you're bored or when you're not doing anything, or certain books that you may be engaging or you may be reading. In, reading. All of that uh, will cause you back to fall back into a place of sin. You know, Matthew 5, 20, 29 to 30 says, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than your whole body to be cast into hell. Or it says uh, in, in verse 30, it says, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, uh, from you, for it is more profitable that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. So there is a re-emphasis here. You know, if you if you look at this verse, it's been it's been re-emphasized two times. And so, if there's anything that causes you to sin, cut it off. Now, this doesn't literally mean that you gorge out your eye or cut off your right hand. It means the trigger that's causing you to sin to be able to cut that off. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, evil company corrupts good habits. So if if you are in um, uh, in a source uh, where, where there are friends, where, uh, where you know, maybe where, where, where they are talking corrupt or they are, um, you know, into a, engaging in activities that can easily tempt you back, remember that evil company corrupts good habits. And it is important that you, severe from from that okay because um we, we need uh, what you're doing is if when you when you actually engage in some something like that is that you are being in a place of tempting the temptations okay and uh, it is important that we call a spade a spade and call a sin a sin and call a source of sin a sin. So if your eye or if anything causes you to sin, you know, ensure that you pluck it out, you you take it out, rather than, uh, you know, as the book says, you know, don't, don't put not putting blinders on it, so that, you know, you, it is, it's okay to have a look once in a while, it's important to completely amputate it to completely cut that off. Now, <clears throat> uh, I'd like you to think about um, what ha are some of those ties that still seem alive? Some can be extremely difficult to severe, but that is 
what is needed. Um, you know, when I go through counseling, sometimes, especially when um, I, when you know, when I help or I counsel um, couples, and there is someone who's engaged in adultery or an extramarital affair, a this is one thing that you know you you bring about almost like an instruction in saying you know if you want to work through your marriage if you desire to come back and work through your marriage then there has to be something done about the other woman or the other man and that is to cut off or like we read learned last year is to amputate is just to break away and the way that sometimes people want to still dabble with it, you know, just a little bit here, just a little bit there, just a phone call, just a hello, just be friends. That is a very, very serious um, trap. Okay. And uh, often that's, that is the enemy's ploy. So whatever you, you're going through right now, whatever you have broken off and, you know, you have, you have renounced right now, Think of any triggers or anything that continues to remain as a tie, okay? And I'd like you maybe right now to write that down, to write it down because by just me telling you and you just thinking, it's floating in the air, it's floating in your mind. But when you write it down, what you're doing is you're making a commitment saying, Lord, this is the eye that's causing me to sin or this is the right hand that's causing me to sin and I'm going to cut this off. Okay, so I'm going to give you 30 seconds as I drink my coffee to do that, okay, to just put that down and come to a commitment with God and saying, I am going to cut off this right eye or this right hand, which means the trigger that's causing um, this, that that's probably going to cause you to to sin again. Okay. Um, the next thing that you're actively doing, which again is a lifestyle change, is to renew your mind with the Word of God. And uh, we've spoken about this very many times, and I'm sure you've heard this over and over and over again. But uh, I'm sure none of us can emphasize the importance of it, you know, how important it is to renew the mind with the word of God. It's almost like, you know, if I were to picture it, it's like you soaking your mind, just like how you soak clothes in soapy water so that, you know, you bring it out and becomes clean. Uh, sorry, I just bring analogies because it helps me to think and it helps me to picture and understand God's word better. So it is like soaking your mind in the word of God every day, regularly, as often as you can on a continuing, uh, regular, regular basis. And how do you do this? And it is done by those, those very common ways of reading, of um, meditating on God's word, on memorizing God's word, listening to it, playing it through song, uh, and also doing God's word. You know, you can't just read and listen and not do because it doesn't, it doesn't build inside of you. It's like you're doing a chemistry um, practical. You can't read a practical, right? You have to do the practical experiment. So similarly, it is reading, meditating on God's word, obeying God's word on a regular basis. And when we keep doing that, you will begin to see how the patterns of your mind begins to change. It begins to become 
Christ-like. You begin to have the mind of Christ. Things become healthier and positive. There is hope that comes about. Okay, and uh, uh, Romans twelve one three we we see that don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So every day, um, you know, even as you walk out on the road you're probably going to be confronted with many things that makes you want makes makes your flesh your carnal nature conform to the world but you renew your mind and you can renew your mind only if you have the word of god within you you know the god's word to be in you so that it can be bought out at a time when you know, you may not be easily be able to recollect it, right? So the more that you read, the more that you uh, absorb, the more that you meditate, the more that you memorize, the more that you keep thinking about it over and over again, it begins to bring about a change in your mind. Okay, so uh, scripture brings about many, many places where we we ought ought to be thinking soberly, um, so that you know. God will fill us with his measure of faith. So to do that. The, the next one is to be able to develop a godly lifestyle. Now, when, when we look at a godly lifestyle is to ensure that we keep our life clean. Keep it in a way that um, honors God, that it becomes a, um, a body of honor, not just externally but even within so 2 timothy 2 20 to 22 says and i'll read that out for you but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and clay some for honor and some for dishonor therefore if anyone cleanses himself from the latter he will be a vessel of for honor sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work and how Flee youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So we are called to flee from that which is defiling, that which is dishonorable, and pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, and out of a pure heart. So keeping your life clean. And that can be in any any area where we could be drawn into sin. So being more like Christ-like, growing more like Christ-like is a way to develop a godly lifestyle. Okay, And the last one is to learn and develop skills which is needed for an efficient life. So... Uh, in Ecclesiastes 10.10 10 says, he, um, if, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. So what it means is, if your tools or if your methods are not sharpened enough, you're going to have to use you know, a lot more of strength on it. But if you use wisdom, if you live a lifestyle that that uh, or or grow in skills that help your general lifestyle, it brings success. So it it takes wisdom to to be disciplined. It takes wisdom to manage your time. It takes wisdom to deal with your money. It takes wisdom to keep the right kind of relationships. It takes wisdom. To, uh, to manage people in, in a professional setting. It takes wisdom to know what to eat. It takes wisdom to know how much to exercise. It takes wisdom on what you say. So all of this brings about success. And the more disciplined and, and um, um, structured we are in the way that we live our lives, we do find ourselves leading a more fruitful life. Amen? Amen. Good. I'm leaving the next 20 minutes, and that is specifically to hear some testimonies, because this chapter excites me because of, um, uh, you know, when, when we go through healing and deliverance, it's not something that you keep quiet. You do not hide a candle under a bushel, right? 
but you place it out into the open for all to see. So what we're going to do is going to just open this next 20, 15, 20 minutes for testimonies um, for your, um, you know, remember, as you, as you testify, it ha your testimony is powerful. It can bring about somebody else's encouragement, healing, deliverance itself. Okay, um, so this is not to embarrass anybody here, but it is to it is to grow and it is to declare. What we are also doing is declaring that we are made free. We have been bought free, we have been healed, we've been delivered, and we are going to live a life that's consecrated to God, okay? So I think that's the best part of this entire lesson, that we are able to take what we have learned and bring it out into, you know, how, how we've been able to apply that. So I'd like to leave it open to the class for testimony. And I'm really hoping there will be a few of you who would be willing to share and encourage others. All right. Thank you, Shay. Please go ahead. Thank you, Ma. Um, I, I give this testimony to the praise of God. Um, so um, before I surrendered my life to Christ, um, I had... I was I just lo loved mu worldly music and um, it had a hold on me even after I was now serious with Jesus I still was listening to worldly music um, for a while um, it was I think for me it was a bit like of, of a struggle until I had a witness within my spirit you know I said that if you want God to take you far you will have to drop this worldly music. And, you know, I knew it was a struggle. I, I had to struggle because I, I just I just enjoyed it. But you know, the moment I started deleting all the songs on my laptop, I was intentional about it. I just saw a difference in my fellowship, in my walk with God. Something just changed immediately, you know, once I made that decision. And since then I've never even had the taste, you know, to go back to it. It's all about gospel songs, Christian songs, just worshiping. My worship life has really, really went. It has greatly improved. And my walk with God, my understanding and sensitivity in the spirit, you know, all that has improved over time. So, yeah, that's one testimony I can give um, when it comes to me um, making the decision to change um, from worldly music to just strictly what glorifies God and what brings Him praise. Amen. Thank you, Shay. Thank you for sharing that. That that is uh, amazing. That when we set ourselves apart and even desires um, for the glory of God, He satisfies us more than we can think or imagine. And um, there's so much more of joy when uh, we stand in obedience to his nudge or to his witness. Thank you, Shay. Thank you, lovely. All right. Open to others too. I'm encouraging others to share. I think someone else has written. Uh, Anita says, I too have the same testimony in respect of Bollywood songs. Now, surprisingly, I can't digest it at all. Uh, even I spend hours watching TV, now don't enjoy it at all, praise God. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I was, uh, I, I also, as I remember, 
back, you know, in college days. That was the time that India just started having uh, cable. And uh, we'd have a couple of channels. This was way back in the 90s. And uh, that's when we'd have, uh, um, you know, that's when Star Movies and I think Star, I don't know. I don't remember what the other one was. One more. Star Plus, I think. I don't know. And and they would have specifically dedicated times for um, you know, shows. And that's something that I would watch. But uh, uh, now I cannot bear sitting in front of a TV. I just cannot. I, it just, uh, it just, there's something in me that just will not permit me. Yeah. So I think even Sissy has said that Hindi film songs, I stopped it completely. Star TV. Yes, Christopher, that's what it is. Star TV. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how, how, God can just change your affections in in a wonderful manner. Uh, Nish, uh, I think someone's addictions to shows and films, okay, was was removed. Uh, someone else has written. I used to have a huge connection. I think is written to to Hollywood music, and now I can't stand the lyrics. I used to watch sitcoms, TV, and now I hardly watch. That's what happens when one is in Christ. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I have teenage children. I have 16 and a 13 year old. And uh, they are in the phase of listening to different kinds of genres of music. And every time I hear it, I mean, there are many times I have thrown my opinion at them and say, you know, uh, you should be careful about what lyrics you're hearing and uh, or, you know, what you're listening to. So my, uh, so, so the, there is also K-pop. That's the fad right now. If you have teens, I am wondering if some of you are, you know, know what I'm, what, I, what I'm talking about and what I'm going through. Okay. Thank you, Abni. Thank you so much. Okay. And it, it just appalls me as to what they find she finds in it. But um, every time that music is played, um, you know, initially I used to put up a very uh, firm foot, but then it did cause a lot of struggles. And then I stepped back and I said, Lord, this battle is between me and you. And uh, now this battle is on my knees. That every time I hear that, you know, I just go into uh, into speaking in tongues, and I just declare whatever that language is <laughs> declaring into my home. I say, declare it out. And uh, but I know one day, just like Shay said, and just like a lot of us have said, I believe and I know that uh, God will will rework the desires and affections of our children also. Okay, uh, there's another testimony. God has helped me overcome alcoholism and an idolatrous life. I no longer go to discourse and I'm really thankful. Amen, amen. How lovely, how lovely. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Anybody else would like to, any more testimonies? If not, we could close. We can have an early close today. Ma'am, a small testimony. Yes, Rupa, go ahead. Uh, my, my daughter, uh, daughter, when she was, I think, five years back, <clears throat> she was very bitter and very arg argumentative and whenever i used she used to talk with me i used to feel very bad headache and uh, very heavy and i was uh, crying on to the lord how can she uh, operate normally because she is so bitter so, so unhappy with life she was so uh, rebellious what can i do lord 
and um, she was always threatening and doing all sorts of things that time and i was just uh, praying about it but god has miraculously delivered her from that state and now she is happy and the lord accepted delivered from that bitterness and now she testifies how how did this happen this is something only god can do and whenever i hear people uh, mothers and parents really struggling with uh, teenagers going through this difficult place i really i can say that god is good and he whenever we cry out and god delivers our children from that pit of uh, depression oppression and bitterness i just wanted to share ma'am thank you thank you rupa i need to hear that because there are significant struggles that um i'm going through as a teenage mother uh and yes that is very very encouraging to hear thank you beth for that i will definitely look into that all right wonderful thank you. yes avni go ahead please yes avni my mind is just recent last night's testimony it's very fresh so uh my daughter she just uh, reached a hostel uh, this sunday and uh, they have this uh, signing duty in the hostel where they have to go room into room and get the sign uh, signs from their seniors juniors who have come back to the hostel so during this time they are being you know uh, taken very roughly by some seniors and she had one such experience last time due to which she was extremely scared of going into their rooms and getting the signs and she was like on the verge of like i'll leave the hostel or i'll do something uh, to get rid of it so yesterday evening she called me and i just ministered to her and i told her about the word of god and how god will give her strength so and give her some word i gave her some prayers and i said you first go with them and then see if how lord deals with you with them you don't have to do anything so she messaged me at 9:30 saying mama i did everything that you said and i am waiting for a miracle that was her message so i i was very tired so by 10:30 i said okay i'll wait for your miracle and i went to sleep and morning 5:30 i woke up first to see the message and she said ma'am mama everything went well in 10 minutes i finished my duty i found my miracle and she was so excited and happy she experienced the power of god and i was giving her the example of daniel so i said see daniel was in the den of lions but lions never opened their mouths when you will go god will close their mouth they will not speak against you or they will not uh, offend you or torment you but she was arguing and saying but with me it, it never happens i said because daniel always prayed and he kept praying even when he was uh, decreed to be you know thrown into so you develop a lifestyle of prayer so she said uh, before every room i would pray and get into the room mama and she experienced that joy last night and she was so happy <laughs> so she, that's what i wanted to share it was such an amazing morning for us both of us me and my husband were asking me what happened i said everything went fine <laughs> she is developing praise god faith in god <laughs> yeah yeah that's nice that's that's so good that you know our children have to go through things themselves in order to understand the disciplines of spiritual life and uh, yeah we feel sometimes as parents we want to take that away from them but god knows best praise god praise god great okay um shall we close uh, anita may i please request you to pray i hope you you have your uh, um you can unmute anita yes ma'am yeah please go ahead thank you lord thank you jesus father god father we bless your name praise your name dada dada we do not have words to lord father to express our joy our peace that comes from you lord father father lord as the word says oh lord father you are the source of love joy life and the good pleasures for your children dada dada thank you lord father that in the name of the lord jesus christ we have freedom oh lord father lord jesus no spiritual principalities who love father lord jesus can overpower us who love father can burden us who love father lord jesus father god we give you glory on our father for the marvelous name of jesus that you have granted us who love father lord jesus 
Almighty you are our Father, Father. Yes, indeed, you are Father. You are our protection. You are our real God. You are our stronghold, our portion, Dada. Dada, in this time, we give you glory, you are Father, for all the beautiful things that we learn from your word, you are Father, Lord Jesus, which are of our upliftment, you are Father. For you are Father, Lord Jesus, to O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, to live a life, O Lord, Father, of overcomer, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, for in you, O Lord, Father, we are the head and we are the overcomer. Father, Lord Jesus, we are the first, O Lord, Father, God. Father, we give you glory, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, that you have uplifted us, O Lord, Father, each one of us, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, Almighty, O Lord, Father, Lord, thank you the way you are shaping our lives, O Lord, Father. Father, Lord Jesus, all the things that when we went through, Lord Father, Lord Jesus, today we can testify of it, O Lord Father, of your goodness, of your mercy, O Lord Father. Indeed, O Lord Father, it has strengthened our faith in you, Dada. And we give you glory for all the past experiences, Dada. That each time, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, we did not even feel, O Lord Father, your presence, but you were there, O Lord Father. You were working for us, O Lord Father. Indeed, you are a promise keeper, a miracle worker. Allah Father, we make her God, Dada. Dada, Allah Father, please forgive us, Allah Father, for the times when we did not trust in you. Father, Lord, please forgive us for the time, Allah Father, where we were fearful having you by our side, Allah Father. Father, Lord Jesus, let this be, Allah Father, our past, Allah Father, no more, Allah Father, Lord Jesus, we shall have the share in the fear. O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, in insecurity, uncertainty, Zara, but for in you, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, our foundation is short, our future is short, and O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, we shall, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, live a life worthy of you till the day of life, O Lord. Give you glory, give you praises for all the encouragement that you have granted us through Pastor Allah, Father. We bless her, Allah, Father, Lord Jesus. Thank you for her life, for she is a blessing unto us, Allah, Father. Father, Lord Jesus, enrich her with more and more experiences, more and more grace and mercy, O Lord Father, in all the circumstances that she is going through, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, that she will see the hand of God in every circumstances, O Lord Father. Thank you, Dada. Thank you for all the marvelous things that you are doing in our life. We praise your name, Dada. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. God bless each Thank of you. you Pastor. God bless you, Pastor. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless. We shall meet next week. God bless. God Bye -bye. bless you, too. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Bye-bye.